good afternoon. So today um, for our fireside chat uh, for VMware Cloud on AWS, we are uh, welcoming a customer here. Uh, this is the Pennsylvania Lumberman's Mutual Insurance. And with me, I have BJ Gardner. He's gonna introduce himself in a second. Uh, my name is Ivan Princhak. I'm a senior director from VMware, uh, responsible for product marketing for VMware Cloud on AWS. And welcome, you know, excited to welcome you to this session. So BJ, uh, why don't we start with uh, introduction? Tell us a little bit about yourself. And then once you do that, tell us a little bit about the uh, Pennsylvania Lumberman's Mutual Insurance Company. Sure. Uh, first off, yeah, thank you very much uh, for having me. This this is a it's great to talk about the technology that we're using and um, you, you know the, the modern ways that we're approaches to DR. Um, you know, we've been at DR for you know for a long time and it's changed over the years. So I appreciate the time and the the ability to tell you know our story uh, for Pennsylvania Lumberman's. Uh, mutual insurance company. So my name is BJ Gardner, and I am the lead systems architect, um, you know, on the network infrastructure side of our uh, company. Um, I've been with Pennsylvania Lumbermans for about 15 years. I've been in uh, infrastructure for about 20, 25 years. Um, so I you know, have I've been around the uh, the ropes of all the different technologies we've used over the years, um, including VMware uh, and now uh, VMware on AWS. So. Um, Pennsylvania Lumberman's is uh, proud to be the oldest and largest mutual insurance company dedicated to the wood products and building materials um, insurance industry. Um, we just celebrated our 125th year, actually in 2020. We did have a celebration in February before uh, the pandemic hit, so it was great, great time. Um, our wood industry expertise, financial stability, and quality products and services are why business owners and insurance brokers have trusted PLM with their business over the years. 125 years. Well, wow. that's yeah. uh, quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate appreciate the introduction there. Um, now, uh, your guys' use cases for disaster recovery, um, you know, in the cloud. Can I, can you tell? And I'm in, imagining as an insurance company, you need to provide additional, you know, confidence to your customers. So, what are what are some of the needs that you guys are are feeling from disaster recovery point of view? Um, you know, as an insurance company. Sure. So, you know, the the need for data to be available um, with no downtime. Um, is is imperative, and you know we we have to be we have to have the ability to pay claims, you know we have to be able to service our customers. You know we we don't have you know we're not selling a physical product. You know all, we're selling a piece of paper that says you know you can trust us that will um, help you in the time of need, and that's that's the promise we make. So you know we have to be able to service our customers. So downtime is pretty much you know not you know it's not acceptable. Um, we're also fairly highly regulated, so we do have some regulation and compliance reasons for disaster recovery, let alone the need to have disaster recovery. Uh, we are somewhat regulated in that respect as well. So that's another portion of the need. Got it, got it. And um, I'm assuming you had an existing solution uh, before going with VMware Cloud on AWS. And what were some of the things that you know are keeping Unite um, you know, with that solution? Uh, or, or perhaps you didn't, oh. but what were, were some of the things that were... You know, uh, keeping United and having you worry that you might not have that disaster protection that uh, your your clients and your company was expecting. Sure, I can tell you that you know that disaster recovery as a whole has um, changed quite quite a lot, uh, and you know in in not that many years, right? So you might have run on tapes for a number of years, 10, 15, even twenty years, and you know I would say in the last five, eight years, it's changed and evolved um, pretty drastically. And I'll just introduce, so we have a, we're, we're using a VMware cloud verified partner called Faction. So they, they introduced us to this solution, VMware on AWS. Um, we were, we had a, we had a disaster recovery solution with them. Um, you know, they, we have a, da a data center in, in New Jersey. That's, you know, we're using uh, kind of as a cloud for Pennsylvania Lumbermans. Um, we, ha we had a disaster recovery site with, with Faction in Atlanta, Georgia, the data center was in Atlanta. And we were using our own Veeam products to do the work for uh, disaster recovery. So we were up for renewal uh, about two years ago, and we started discussing uh, ways to uh, maybe save some costs to the RDR platform, you know, the DR as a service we, were, we had with them. And um, the cost, and then also you take some load off of us. So, you know, we had a physical footprint issue with our data center, so we had to shrink the data center. Um, and so we were pushing more equipment and more. Um, services to the cloud. Um, and at the same time, I had some issues with um, at the company with uh, manpower. So we, we lost some resources internally. Um, so we needed a way to keep the IT department or at least my my area uh, lean 
as well as maybe save some costs. So they were kind of the two drivers and Faction did bring us the solution, the AWS solution. So it was good timing at this, you know, it was good timing. And, um, you know, so that's pretty much where the main drivers was uh, manpower and, you know, some cost savings. Got it, got it. So that's helpful to understand. Um, I, I guess the other question I have is, um, you know, previously had disaster recovery as part of your, your broader, broader data center um, footprint. Now by moving and extending uh, your data center to a cloud, you're essentially having a hybrid, hybrid cloud yep. uh, solution. Parts of it on premises, parts of it in cloud. You know, what, what were some of the um, you know, changes that you were trying to you know, accomplish with, with, with going to hybrid cloud? Or, you know, was going to cloud important to you or just happened to be a solution that you know, happened to work out for you? Like, well, it's, why, a good, why, why cloud? it's a good question because we were perfectly happy once once we got out of the mindset of bare metal restores and using tapes and even using you know digital transmission, but to a, an off you know an offsite location that we were still managing internally, so we needed manpower, we needed resource, we needed hours to do all that. Um, we had the we had the solution set up with Faction in Atlanta, and it worked fine. It, there was no problems. Um, you, I think what happens is when you lose staff and you decide what what are you going to do. Um, to fill the roles that they were filling, it became a question of what, who can help us? Do we have to hire? And we have to still keep the services running and up and running. The disaster recovery for us is a non-question. It needs to happen. We need to have it running. So, you know, when it just was kind of good timing at the same time as there was a need. So we had a need where we needed extra resource, whether it was going to be consultative or if we were going to hire internally, um, or we needed a partner. So, you know, Faction came back and said, listen, we have this new, you know, we're not fully engulfed in this solution yet. It's fairly new, but why don't you, why don't we think about switching you guys since you need us to take on more responsibility and that you have to realize the key there is Faction took on almost like an FTE for us, right? They took on an employee based, you know, what they, what that employee was doing, they took on by going to this model. So it helped us from a from a manpower's perspective, um, you know, and it also kind of gave us peace of mind knowing that 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 was covered for us and we didn't have to do extra work internally to make up for that lost, you know, FTE. Got it. Got it. Um, and uh, Faction is a partner that's uh, you know very good partners of ours. We've been working with them essentially since day on VMware Cloud on AWS. So yeah, very good good partnership there. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about like your partnership with Faction? So I know that you guys work together on this solution, but you know, in general, has you know, Faction worked on other things with you? And how long they have, have them been, uh, you know, your partner? Yeah. So one of the comments I had earlier was um, we uh, were consolidating floors at our main office where we had the data center. Um, so this was like 2014-ish, 2015, right? And so with the consolidation came, well, where are we going to put the where are we going to put the the running resources that don't fit anymore? So the footprint means we have less hardware we can obviously fit in in the data center. Um, and we have a fairly large um, in infrastructure for our imaging system with the imaging platform. Uh, it and storage needs are are fairly aggressive for that system. So um, we started talking to Faction. They they have they had offered kind of colo type you know colo offerings at the time. Um, but what they provided to us was basically that they'll provide all the hardware, the networking, and the vCenter for us in New Jersey, and we could basically offload resources there. And then we have, you know, we have a, a tunnel to the data center, so it's it's basically kind of on-prem for us. It's sort of like an on-prem data center in that regard, even though it's 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 a cloud-hosted solution. So that's where they kind of saved us because of the consolidation of the data center. Um, and so we've been with them, you know, as as a as basically a partner and, and an extension of our date, you know, a extension of our um, IT department, you know, for about five, six, six, seven years now. So they've been a great partner. Right. They've been great to work with. And this is just the next offering that, you know, they provided to us this VMware on AWS. Yeah, absolutely agree with you. Like I said, they've been very good, great partners um, of ours as well. Now let, let's talk up specifically about the solutions that you, that you guys uh, implemented. Um, can you walk us a little bit through, like, you know, what specifically had you had to do to move to VMware Cloud What are what are some of the, you know, the technologies that you had to deploy, some of the processes? Um, how did it all work? Sure. So, 
like I said, we did have an Atlanta data center with Faction. We had we were using Veeam as the as the replication uh, mechanism. Uh, we were able to uh, with SRM with the Site Recovery Manager through, through VMware. We were able to basically just replicate the Atlanta data center to the uh, AWS data center, uh, and then decommission Atlanta. And it was a pretty seamless process. Um, I would I'll just give you the kind of the build the build information. So to build out the AWS environment, there was two two really big positives for PLM. One, Faction handled a lot of the work, right? We, so it wasn't an in-house resource trying to set up all this, this infrastructure. So Faction set up the SRM for us in Atlanta to AWS, and they set up all the uh, restore groups, the replication groups, the jobs, and the recovery groups. They did all that for us in the background. So all, you know, all in, it took about maybe four months to get the process running, the migration from Atlanta to AWS, the decommissioning, decommissioning of Atlanta. And then on, a, on another note, we took our Philly data center, what was left in the Philly data center, and we, and, we not, and we put that in AWS as well. So we actually had, we have two data centers piping into AWS and we have one in New Jersey and the Philly one is, is piping in there as well. Um, and so, yeah, about all told, it took about four, um, about four months to get it all up and running. Um, and it was, it was seamless. There was no downtime to uh, production uh, processes at all. And I can tell you what we're running. So what? So some of the services we are running in um, AWS are we have the accounting systems, uh, we have our imaging platform, which I mentioned earlier, um, file share data, we have management reporting, and we even have a legacy COBOL system running um, and replicating wow. to uh, AWS. And um, you know, roughly speaking, how large is your footprint um, now in in um, VMware Cloud on AWS? I mean, I don't, you know, I don't have, I don't have an exact, you know, last, last we looked, we're, we're, we're not a large company, you know, we're about 160 people, uh, employees. Um, so, I mean, we're not, we're not big. So we're, we're only running about 15 terabytes, you know, of storage um, right now with, you know, on-prem and, you know, in our data centers and in AWS. So, you know, the, again, the, it's not a huge build for us. It's our size and it's, it's big for us, you know, whatever we're running is, is important and big to us, but, you know, compared to a large company, no, but, you know, for our resources, you know, it's, you know, it's, that's about what we're running at right now. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, we have actually hundreds of uh, customers yeah, of your, right. your size. So uh, gotcha. yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's okay to, st to start small, you know, yeah. um, you know they, they customers come in, in yeah. variety of sizes and uh, we have a lot of small ones and, you know, a few, a lot of big, a few ones. big ones. So. Yeah. <laughs> no shame in that. Um, Okay, so uh, you talked about some of the workloads um, that you guys are running um, in VMware Cloud AWS. Can you talk a little bit more about the, the impact that you guys have seen as a result of deploying it? I think, you know, to, to make, you know, to make, I guess, a sort of a, a little joke, uh, you know, we haven't had to, we haven't had to use the services of, of failing over our production, you know, which, which is good. It's not a bad thing. That's a good thing that we haven't actually had to, to use the DR fully. Um, so I guess the, the big benefits that we're seeing out of the solution right now is the ease of test failovers. So you know we do annual because of compliance and regulation, we do annual disaster recovery testing. And you know over the years, the different ways we would test, um, it, it could take us anywhere from four to eight hours. You know way back in the day with tapes, it would take us say 24 hours right to run a test and, and we'd have to do it every year. So you know I can tell you that you know the resources and time, that we've saved from doing test restores to the VMware on AWS service and SRM in, in particular, you know, we've it's it, it runs like clockwork and it's it's down to a couple hours, maybe tops. We get users involved, they do testing with um, you know, with VMs right right in the right in the DR center. Um, and it's all remote too. That's the best part, is everyone can do it from wherever they are. Um, you know, we have our back end people, the engineers. You know, uh, run the recovery groups and that we need to test, and they spin them up. We throw a couple of VMs there for people to log into and and test the uh, whatever we're testing, say for that year. So it's it's been the time savings and the ease of the recovery. You know, what's funny is the more complex the back end may be, you know, with SRM and you know the networking we have set up to make it run, the easier it kind of gets for the staff to run it. And and that's you know that's definitely been. You know the case as you as you progress through di putting in different technologies. Yes, it's a complex system. You need expertise. We need help. We need partners. We need a faction. We need VMware to help here and there. But running it once it's once it's set up, running it is is really nice and streamlined. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, essentially, I think a lot of the expertise, um, you know, no surprise, you're taking an existing data center, you know, you're extending it to a public cloud, uh, yeah. you know, s setting up the network connectivity in between all the security, all the permissions that need to be done. Right. Um, this is where, you know, the expertise comes in. Mm -hmm. But once you have it up and running, you know, it's um, an identical environment. Um, it is. You know, the, what you had from VMware on premises is now running, running in public cloud. Um, and so, you know, hopefully, you know, that saves you any, any learning or any changes you have to make to the processes and, you know, trying to get new tools and yep. so forth up and running. So that's a good um, point. You know, there's a little bit of an initial investment, but, uh, you know, that investment pays off long term by sure. not having to go through these drastic changes. Yeah, that's a good point. I can tell you that one of the things over the years we've been running VMware since about 2007 in, in, gen in general, VMware tools type services and, and, and platforms. Um, you know, and the best thing about the, the, the different iterations we've done is the, the staff, the, the on-staff engineers don't have to learn new products or new tools. You know, making this change, you, you know, we, when you revamp your entire disaster recovery, you would think there's some type of learning curve you're gonna have to go through. Now, maybe the engineers aren't, they, they don't know SRM inside and out because we haven't used it, but, but faction people do, VMware people can help. And, you know, even over those four months, I'm gonna include the learning curve in there for the staff to be able to run through iterations of test failover. So um, you're absolutely correct. I and mean, using the similar tools and platforms year in and year out definitely helps, you know, with, you know, with, with running the solution. Yeah. And I guess maybe a uh, kind of follow-up question around SRM. So, you know, maybe uh, folks that are watching this video aren't familiar with the solution. Just, just very, very briefly for those folks, um, VMware Site Recovery is a, a cloud-based offering that we have that's running on top of VMware Cloud on AWS. This is managed by VMware. It's based on our Site Recovery Manager, which is our on-premises technology. Mm -hmm. And essentially, um, just to kind of summarize it, customers are able to select you know, specific VMs that they want to protect and then, you know, rely on you know, vSphere replication technologies to move the uh, bits and, you know, bytes over to VMware Cloud on AWS. And, um, but the key thing is it's, um, you know, uh, per VM protection, you know, really done at the, at the hypervisor level. And I, I guess maybe um, just a follow-up question on that, how, how, uh, like just in terms of some insight, how did you guys go about deciding like which workloads you want to protect versus not protect, or did you decide to like protect everything you have? Like what, what were some of the you know, decision-making uh, going on there? So sure. So we protect everything. So it doesn't matter the, the importance, the, the difference though. So we may protect everything, but the recovery groups is the key to that question. So when you set up your recovery groups, you set up what gets restored first in what order. And that's where the priority, some things may not even get restored. We protect everything. We protect everything from domain controllers to print servers to, you know, general, you know, public kind of file share type stuff, stuff that may not be important when you need to recover. We protect it still. But the, the key there is what are you going to, what are you going to restore and when? So you have, you have a disaster may happen or, you know, catastrophic network failure and you're, you're deciding to declare, right? That you're going to declare and you're going to restore. At that point, what's going to be restored first, and, and in what order? So that that's the key to that. You, you generally, we protect everything. I mean, th there's no question, but um, you just never know what you're going to need and when. So you may need that non-important, you know, file server because there's something on there that you didn't realize, and so you protect it to have it, but you restore in an order that mandates that's mandated by your business processes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um. Um. I, I guess. And another question, and you spoke about this a little bit, is um, you know when we when you move to VMware Cloud on AWS because you know the environment is familiar with with what you have on premises. Mm -hmm. um, if you have to kind of compare it to maybe the previous way of um, doing your disaster uh, protection, like what were you know some of the changes that your team had to go through, you know, if if, if any? Yeah, the only what, what changed with this solution. Yeah, what changed? I mean, the biggest things for my staff that changed is really just the job creations. Faction helped with a, a lot of the um, building of the replication cycles for for the VMs. Get, so think about it. So for us, you know, I think the I think more of the change for us would have happened when we went to Faction more than when we went from Faction Atlanta to, to AWS. So and I, and I say that because so Atlanta was 
still factions, it's under factions, you know, you know data center. It's under our agreement with them. They, they're running the Atlanta data center. So they took um, on the task of replicating Atlanta's data over to AWS. So we didn't have to actually be involved in that. The only thing my staff had to be involved in is the recovery group planning and then the replication of the Philadelphia data center for us, which is under our umbrella still. So, you know, we had to worry about recreating the jobs and hooking up the SRM from Philly into AWS. Faction took care of Atlanta and then everything was in there. And, and actually I, I added, added note is that Faction also took care of New Jersey for us as well. So they took the New Jersey resources and the Atlanta resources, got them running on AWS. Uh, Pennsylvania Lumbermans took on the Philly data center to get that on, on AWS. But, you know, going from Veeam to SRM really wasn't that big of a, of a hit as far as the learning curve there. Got it, got it. So it, 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 it sounded like the you know, key ingredients for you guys to be successful in this is, you know, one, you were going to a you know, cloud environment that's very similar to what you have on premises and familiar. Um, okay. Factions seem to make a big difference because yeah. they, you know, um, were involved in setting this up, making sure everything's kind of in, in, initially working. Um, you know, any any other kind of factors that, um, you know, you recall as being key to success? I, I, honestly, having a, having a good partnership. Uh, honestly, I mean, it really comes to, we're a small shop. Um, and when we lose manpower, you know, you, losing an engineer for us is a really big deal. You know, we're not a staff of 10. You know, my group, my, my internal group just that I manage, we're only five people and we're doing a lot of work. We do a lot from anywhere from desktop support to network infrastructure to win, you know, anything on the circuits and stuff. So we're doing a lot uh, with a small set of people. And so when you lose someone, it's, it's a big hit. So your partnerships is really the key. Um, having vendors that you can trust, having vendors that act as an extension to your IT shop instead of just a vendor is, is really important. And I mean that, and I'd say that, you know, a hundred times out of a hundred, if you know if that question is asked, that partnerships is is the biggest key mm -hmm. to success for a small shop. Maybe okay. a big shop is different, but a small shop you have to have partners and vendors you trust and you work well with. Yeah, it make, makes sense. And you know, as I as I mentioned before, that's true for for many of our many of our smaller smaller customers. Um, I, I guess maybe let's switch a little bit of a topic. Uh, you know, uh, COVID nineteen has definitely just you know impacted all of us. Before we started, we had a little, a little chat about yeah. like you know whose whose office is being opened up when. Um, can you talk a little bit about how um, you know COVID nineteen and the pandemic has impacted um, you and you know your team? Yeah. So um, as mentioned, you know we're about one hundred and sixty people in in the company. Um, about half are in the Philly area, the Philadelphia, PA area. Uh, and then the other half is spread across the country. We had a fairly good uh, remote services um, solution with a VPN provider. Um, and so when we went home in, in March and everyone went home to work remote, the biggest challenge for us was um, expanding those VPN services to the rest of you know, the, the Philadelphia employees um, and, and also taking care of some of the staff that didn't have mobile equipment. They didn't have laptops, right? So that was the big challenge for us. And I can tell you that VMware played a pretty crucial role because to expand the VPN services, we, we put another kind of load balance VPN service in our other data center in New Jersey. So the primary is Philadelphia. Um, you know, so that went into VMware as well. Um, and then also we put together some VMs for temporary access for the, the, the users that needed access into the building remotely that didn't have laptops. So we gave them temporary laptops with a remote desktop that was running in VMware in Philadelphia in order to, to connect and work to their office. Now, you know, between March and say June, we went through the process of converting them over to permanent machines with VPN services. But, you know, we needed that kind of quick turnaround solution and VMware makes that pretty seamless to set up, you know, quick client services for uh, remote people. And, you know, we had a good percentage of the office, maybe 30% that you know, we're in a position where they couldn't work remote. They didn't have the ability at the time in March. So um, you know, we were able to quickly turn around a solution, a quick, a quick solution, uh, kind of a Band-Aid until we were able to get a more permanent solution in their hands. And you know, the VPN services we had available and already kind of in, you know, architected uh, worked pretty seamless. And, and again, all of it's running on VMware. Great, great. 
Well, we could uh, help in um, in the, <laughs> with yeah. more than just disaster recovery. Sure, absolutely. So yeah. here. Mm -hmm. um, if I if you kind of um, you know think about uh, maybe can you can you uh, summarize um, for us um, you know what are some of the kind of key learnings and best practices that you would recommend for other, customer, other customers that wanted to adapt VMware Cloud uh, on AWS for disaster recovery? Mm -hmm. Sure. So, I mean, honestly, some, some key points there. Um, you know, you want to ensure that your, you want to ensure that your company is going to be protected in the event of a disaster. You need to look at your current processes you have, current disaster recovery technologies, and you really need to figure out with the current climate and, and the disasters that, that are happening these days that maybe were, are different than the way, than the traditional say hurricanes and stuff. We have other issues now, we have pandemics, you know, we have terrorism and we have things like that. Things that are just different in the world today than they might've been when you used to have, a, you know, an older style disaster recovery plan. And you need to figure out, you know, can you recover? How quickly can you recover? And do you have the manpower to recover? Um, you know, those are kind of the things to think about and you'll quickly kind of realize that you need a, a you, you need a scalable, flexible solution, and and that's that's cloud. No matter how you really spin it, even if you do it yourself and you put things in remote locations, um, it's still cloud. It's still getting it out of your say you know on-prem you know in infrastructure in a city wherever city you are, right? So for us, when we went to the exercise of moving to the Atlanta disaster recovery plan. It worked great, and that was that was great. And then moving to uh, AWS just make things just even more streamlined and more easy. And the recovery groups are automated. So even with even with the the, the past services we had, it was manual. We were recovering systems manually. Now Veeam had a process to do it, but it was still manual for our group to to go in and and kind of recover. And a, a, AWS runs an automated recovery group process for us with the SRM tools. Um, that makes things even more streamlined and, and fast. And I can tell you that, you know, your, your, your recovery times, you don't realize how much more efficient they can be if you're using the right tools. Well said, uh, that's uh, really, really well summarized. So maybe uh, uh, my, my last question, um, you know, disaster recovery is what your initial use case was. That's where you started with VMware Cloud on AWS. Um, any other plans, any other use cases, anything else you guys are thinking about doing in the cloud and with the service? Um, you know, at this time, you, you know, for us, it's just, we're always looking at, you know, what the next solution, what the next tech is going to be. Um, I can tell you that we're probably going to be looking to push, you know, more into, you know, in, in more into AWS, yes. Also, though, more into, say, Office 365. So we have some different distributed um uh, resources kind of going all over the place. And I think for us, the key is going to be um, keep things flexible, uh, keep things, um, I, we like to have that hybrid solution. I don't want all the eggs in one basket, right? That's kind of how the mentality is, you know, within our group. So we do like to spread, spread out the, the load of the resources, um, having good partnerships, um, you know, and as far as specific to VMware, um, there's definitely, you know, there's definitely a, um, a hint of possibly looking at like say the VDI solutions out there for desktops. Again, we have not we have not adopted um, that yet, but it, it's been on my kind of my radar for a couple of years. So it's something more we're gonna look into on the VMware platform is possibly moving into that kind of client side of VMware that we're just, you know, we're not in yet. So that's always been on the radar for you know at least five years now. And it's something we'll be looking to in the future probably. Got it. Got it. Well, um, BJ, I totally appreciate your time. Um, you know, hopefully we're uh, giving additional insight and additional learning to the folks that are watching us. And um, thank so. you for your time and thank you for the time of everybody that's been uh, watching this video. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks again. And I appreciate you asking me to join.